What's going on, guys? I want to report on 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 the VPN leak that happened a few days ago. Well, didn't happen a few days ago. It's been there for months, but it was discovered a few days ago, July fifteenth, by I believe Paul Bischoff. Hope I pronounced his name right. And uh, we know, guys, when you use a VPN, you have no idea if they are logging your information. If you're logging your IP address, if you're logging your domains that you visit or not, you just take your word for it. Even if you pay information, you don't know. They, because it's a completely encrypted channel, right? Once you send that information through the pipe, the VPN, wherever you land, will make the request on your behalf as a completely new IP address, right? But they still have this information. So what you're doing essentially in a nutshell is what you're what you're doing in a nutshell is you're moving the visibility from your ISP, which is running your transparent proxy, looking at the layer four layer. So which know you know they know your IP address and that's pretty much it. And and, and unencrypted DNS queries, right? And you're moving that to the VPN. And the VPN now sees this information now what obviously vpns put out this note that's hey we don't log no log we have zero log policy all that stuff but this kind of vpn and i believe other umbrella vpns that uses the same service was caught logging and not just logging they were using an elastic elastic search database to store the IP addresses, the the logs and, and, and DNS entries and pretty much everything in an elastic search cluster. And what happened here is the elastic search cluster was basically passport didn't have any password uh, password protected it wasn't password protected it was unencrypted it had api access because that's how elastic search you can do search right it was public available to the public and apparently someone did a port scan and uh, on the public internet found that elastic search uh, open and then starts issuing query and they found it oh and i think one search engine i don't know if this article mentioned it but one search engine actually in, started indexing the content of the elastic search right and i want to talk about this a little bit and, and and guys i think a little bit there's these articles uh, i think they are a little bit of exaggerating to be honest because like uh, including user passwords and, and all that stuff i mean you gotta think about that guys it's it's very important that i mentioned when i mentioned ip addresses and domains and i think that's pretty much it that what vpn sees that's exactly what isp is because guess what guys we are all now 90 percent of the web uses https which is tls now this is almost end-to-end -end encrypted between your client and the server and, and anything anyone in the middle cannot see anything given that you're not man in the middle then you don't have they didn't serve you a valid certificate that hadn't been dns poisoned right it most of the time you're encrypted and no one in the middle can actually read anything because you you exchange the keys and only you as a client and the destination server have the key so if you're going to google and you're searching something you're exchanging the keys even in a vpn you're exchanging the key, keys through a tls hello and we talked about that check out this video right here we talked about that and you're exchanging the keys between you and you're sending a tcp packet that says i want to exchange keys bro so you're sending a tls hello says oh this is my key and then the vpn will just try uh, act like a, a, a the, as a transport right it will transport your key request to to change between to to the final destination and it will just uh, tunnel you back right it's just it will it doesn't know what it, even if it looks and that's a good example even if it tries to look it cannot do anything it cannot decrypt anything so ha telling me that it has user password i really i only the only 
thing that I can think of is actually if users are using a pure HTTP. And I don't blame the VPN, to be honest. I blame, well, you can blame the VPN, obviously. If they claim that, the blame is on them, obviously. But but users, even if you're a VPN, don't use pure unencrypted HTTP services, right? I mean, there are cases where your service must run on unencrypted. I don't, I cannot think of why you would run an unencrypted services, but if you are, then anything you send through that unencrypted, it is unencrypted. So everybody can see it. It used to be your ISP, but now your VPN sees it. And now, now a question is, why would a VPN log a password? I don't know. Obviously, I, I try Obviously, the, 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 the VPN here in the question say, it tries to defend, it says, hey, we're using, we're using this just to, to, for analytical purposes and stuff like that to speed up our service. And uh, I would understand the logging, the IP address. I don't know if you need to log the IP address to improve your analytics. You can just log the latency, right? Hey, we can hash the IP addresses and store the hash and then compare the latencies. And then just this way you can safely store it. I think you can safely store the hash of the IP address because it's not public information, right? And then, yeah, even if, even if you decide to expose it, if, if it leaked, got leaked, like in this case, that's not a big deal, right? Look at this, look at the stuff they found. They found URLs that appear to be domains from which advertisements are injected into a free user's web browsers. See that, that I don't know how this will be captured in an HTTPS. It's impossible to, to capture URLs, right? Uh, because URL are part of the, that the body or the headers, right? Forgot what part it is, but it is part of the HTTP, which is encrypted. So. The fact that URLs are logged, advertisement or not, I don't know how it was being encrypted because it shouldn't be, unless the VPN company itself injects that. That's a difference. If it's a free user, maybe there you agreed. If you hey, if you want to use our free services, maybe we're gonna serve you some ads, and that's that's not. It's not. I mean, even though, how would they serve you? the ads. I mean, the only way I can think of that is if they can do it at the client side, if they force you to install some sort of a browser extension, then they can inject those ads. Otherwise, if, if they can inject stuff in the page, then they must be in a, doing a man in the middle because how do they open the page in order to inject stuff in it. Either the client side at the end after stuff has been decrypted or in the middle, which is, I really doubt it. I'll, that will be a big disaster if they are doing a man in the middle just to, just to see what the content. Or maybe if the if the page is itself is unencrypted, then they just obviously can do whatever they want. Geotags, again, geotags. Uh, whatever that means, right? It's a very ambiguous word. Geotagging here is if the client, the VPN client at the, uh, at the application asks for a location and then tags it to the IP address because just having the IP address doesn't give you the location. It gives you the, the nearest thing is the collection of zip codes when it comes to the US, which is a city, right? It doesn't give you exact location. Let's, let's be clear about that, right? Connection stamp, timestamp. I don't I don't find it problematic storing connections timestamps, to be honest. IP addresses of both user VPN, they connected. Yeah, this is I think this is bad. I think if they're gonna store something of that, store the hash. I might be wrong, guys. Uh, let me know if you what do you what do you guys think about this, right? VPN session secrets and tokens. Well, if you're storing that information, that shouldn't <laughs> that should have been secured, obviously, right? The session and the secret session. So if someone recorded, if someone recorded the conversations, the UDB packets between the client and the VPN, because VPN, I believe it uses UDB, right? If they recorded all these packets, 
and they store it, then now we have a leaked secret. We can use those secrets to, to decrypt that transmission and find out your IP address and find out every, pretty much everything. I mean, if you think about it, whomever sniffing between you and the VPN already knows your IP address, right? If you think about it, it's just that IP address is always public because um, it's in the middle, uh, it's, a, it's a TCP packet, it's a layer four packet, so people can look at that stuff. Yeah, account password and plain text, I don't buy that. I don't buy that one bit. I don't, I don't, th I think this is a, it's just a mistake, I don't know. How could you account password and plain text? That's just that looks like an like, like an unfortunate mistake to have like a password plain text because I, I don't know how do you get a plain text password if you're using HTTPS and, and VPN shouldn't really see that unless we're talking about different account. What account here is it a VPN service account? Maybe. I don't know, guys. What do you think about this hack? <laughs> I don't know if it's hack. It's just exposed data. Elastic search. And obviously, uh, 1.4 terabyte, I believe. Uh, 1.2 terabyte worth of data. Right? It's all this la logs data. It's now indexed somewhere on the internet. Obviously, the VPN company has, uh, has apologized and then did all that stuff, right? And then, yeah. I don't know, guys. So their, their XQ's saying here, Hey, due to personnel changes caused by COVID, we've found we've not found bugs in server firewall rules immediately, which led to the f potential risk of being hacked. Well, I don't know if it was hack, to be honest. So we're talking about the firewall here. They forgot to block port scanning apps from detecting that they were running uh, Elasticsearch locally. I guess publicly, right? So their, their firewall didn't block that port. So people found it, and when they found it, they started issuing uh, API requests. If it's internal, we don't, it's not really a big deal, right? I mean, you still need to to secure it, but if it's internal and blocked by firewall, you were safe, but they forgot even to block the that. that That's what happened, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's just a very interesting uh, article to read and then learn about that. And then obviously guys, uh, to me, <laughs> I don't I don't use a VPN and even uh, even for because uh, why would you use a VPN, right? For privacy reasons. I gave up my privacy a long time ago when it comes to the internet. If I'm using the internet, I know that whomever I'm consuming their service, they know me, they know my stuff. I'm, I'm on Google for God's sake, like they know all the stuff, right? And so I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of okay with it. It's obviously it's, it's unfortunate, but I, 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 I know about that. But if you want to use a VPN, then the next reason is okay. You don't care about privacy, right? Why would you use a VPN then? Use a VPN. Well, a lot of people claims like, oh, unblock certain content like in Netflix. Well, Netflix now blocks VPN access. And they, they are, they are getting pretty good. Uh, on doing that. It's like, hey, if you're from U US and you want to watch like a UK show, you can use a VPN, but Netflix can detect that. They can, they detect because there are only so much VPN servers out there and it's very clear that for Netflix, like, okay, all of a sudden, we found that Phil is connecting from this IP address and also Edmond is connecting and Hussein is connecting and they are all using different Netflix accounts, but they're all coming from same IP address. Hmm. Either Phil is having a, a party and everybody is in the same house and they are connecting using the same Wi-Fi and they're, for some reason, everyone is on their iPad and watching their own Netflix account, which is really rarely the case maybe right if it's three four is like they would get okay but if it's like 50 or 70 or 100 people coming from the same ip address with different netflix accounts eh, 
<laughs> Netflix immediately will say, okay, this is a, this is a VPN. <laughs> it's very clear they will they will they will block it. The second thing they can just literally hard code, make a list of all the VPN services that's not hard. Right? Just yeah, whenever we have it, just pick it up. And static IP addresses are very, very expensive, <laughs> right? So if someone got a static IP address, they will not they will they they will keep it and 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 it's very hard to change it right you can pay a lot of money for that stuff yeah millions of log users password uh yeah what do you guys think do you use a vpn if yes let me know why why would you use it and uh i'm uh, do you uh, are you afraid of privacy do you know if the if your vpn logs your data or not uh i know for example some some people use vpn uh to access blocked content in their country. And then uh, this is a good use case, right? I mean, we don't have, uh, in the US, we don't have sites that are blocked, to be honest, right? I mean, everything is pretty much open. When I was in Bahrain, my whole country, most, a lot of websites are actually blocked by the government. And that's one use case to use, uh, to use a VPN if you wanna look at certain content or consume certain website right some people use a vpn for that some people use a vpn to consume some some stuff all right guys uh i'm gonna see you in the next one well a very quick video to talk about this zero logs vpn uh this vpn that has been exposed millions of logs sheesh that's a lot of logs man all right guys see you in the next one goodbye